this morning and um, that foundation is going to be taken from the prophets what the prophets have said from Torah what Torah has said and uh, from what apostles and disciples and what Yeshua said in this last days we want to let ourselves know about, particularly about the time we are in, what is really, really happening. I want to title this. It's, 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 I don't know, it's not an easy uh, message, but I want to title it in a way that Yahweh is helping me to speak to you concerning this matter. Kings of the earth against Yahweh and his people. Kings of the earth against Yahweh and his people. Now, when Bible talk about Yahweh's people, in the book of Isaiah, we are hearing house of Yahweh, house of Israel, people of Yahweh. They are choosing people. They are children of Yahweh. They are the people that Yahweh, you know, set out himself. They bring them out. They are set apart people. They are set. Let me take you to where Yahweh made this announcement concerning um, his people. Who are Yahweh's people? When the Bible talk about Yahweh's people, who are they? I'm trying to emphasize the, the, the title that is taken there, Kings of the Eight Against Yahweh and His People. I want to explain what that title is, how we come out to it. Exodus chapter 19. Now, this is after the, 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 the law, the Torah, and the Ten Commandments, the two tablets were presented to Israel, the leaders of Israel. Um, Yahweh had asked Moses to come to Mount Sinai for him to give him the two tablets, which is the Ten Commandments, and the Torah, that is the law. So, there and then, after they had, you know, discussed with Yahweh and did everything, Yahweh spoke to, to the leaders of Israel. Spoke to the leaders of Israel. And, um, let us, before we look at Exodus 19, let us look at Exodus 24 where he made that statement. Because the law itself was, you know, consecrated with the blood, with the blood of animal. It was sealed. That is to tell you that that law can never be broken. Any covenant that was made with law or one underwrites or undertakes with law, with blood, sorry, with blood, you can't break it. Because that blood, what that law, or agreement or covenant is showcasing is that if anybody breaks it, blood will be shed from the part of the one transgressing or breaking it. So that is another reason anybody who tells you the law is broken or is taken away will tell the person is a liar, is a murderer. Now, listen to what transpired. Exodus chapter 24, verse 6. And Moses took half of blood half of the blood, and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant, the book of the covenant, take note of that, and read in the audience of the people, and they said, all that Yahweh has said, we will do and be obedient. So they signed their signature. They agreed with Yahweh. All that contains in Torah, the covenant book, the Torah, they will agree. And that is inclusive of the Ten Commandments, which will come later. They will. Moses took the blood 
and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant, which Yahweh has made with you concerning all these words. These words, the words of Torah. So both the Torah, the covenant commandments, and the people were sprinkled with the blood. That if they break it, they'll be in trouble. They'll be in trouble. Deuteronomy chapter 27, he said, he gave them the law. And he said, whosoever that will do the law will be blessed. Whosoever that breaks the law will be accursed. So first follow anyone that breaks the law. Now, this is how Yahweh captured his people. The people of Yahweh. He handed them the law. He sealed it and put it in their hand. And he made a statement. Exodus 19, verse 4 and 5. And ye and have seen, sorry, ye have seen what I did unto Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, that is the covenant in chapter 24. If you will keep it, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So if Israel will keep his commandments, his Torah, his law, they will be Yahweh's own people. Amen. That is only how they be they, they, are, they are called Yahweh's people, the children of Israel. Verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So we are called peculiar people, peculiar nation. Unfortunately, the Gentile Christianity will tell you that there are peculiar people, a chosen nation, a royal priesthood. But where is the standard? Where is the agreement? Where is the covenant that will make you become? Because you always say, you must obey my covenant. And the covenant is the Torah and the commandments he gave them. So if we are not obeying the Torah, what is written in it? So how are you peculiar treasure? You can only be a peculiar treasure of Yahweh when you obey Yahweh's covenant commandments. That's, right. That's only how you become a chosen child or a chosen Israelite. That's only how you, you are called a chosen Israelite. Mm -hmm. Now, that having been said, we look at the kings, the kings of the earth against Yahweh. Who are the kings of the earth? Now, we have been looking at the book of, in fact, various books, particularly the book of Isaiah. And the book of Isaiah has been mentioning what these people had done. And we know from the Torah that it was the old leaders, the fathers, the father that rebel against Yahweh, the father that will not go against the word of Yahweh. They are the people that Yahweh called the globalists, the capitalists, wicked rulers. They are the people who were hooty, who raised their head against Yahweh. And the prophets, the prophets, the first prophets, the first pastors, the first priests in their midst, whether they are men or women, all of them combined together. These are the people that this message captured as kings of the earth. Now, these Israelites, whether they are from the tribe of Judah or the tribe of Israel, they join faith when Israel fail as a nation, and Yahweh scattered them. He said that they will also join faith or join hands with the Gentile wicked rulers. To do what? To hurt Israel, to harm Israel, to eat Israel up, to enslave their brothers, to enslave their sisters, to harm them, to do them wickedness. So that is what 
has happened. And that is why today you talk about globalists, capitalists. Where did they come from? They come from what the scripture had already provided, told us in advance. The scripture told us in advance that these people are going to be, you know, part and parcel of the formation of what will befall Israel in the later days. In the later days. I read Isaiah chapter 2, verse 6. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. So these are Israelites who had fallen. Their leaders, they join hands with the strangers to do what? To deal with their brothers in the foreign land. In the foreign land. That is what is going on. Now, these globalists called the capitalists as well, the wicked rulers of Israel, plus the Gentile nations, and the first prophet that propels them, the first prophet tell them, the road is clear, go on. The road is all right, go on. Tomorrow is fine, go on. Do this, do that. They are engineered, they are propelled by the first teachers and first prophets. And the custodian of the false preachers is the fallen priests of Israel that join hands with the fallen Gentile nation or the Gentile world that do not know Yahweh at all. Rather, they have their own way. And that rests in papacy. That Gentile leadership falsehood, which where we have, you know, the first prophets, the first pastors, and so on, rest in papacy. You can see how the Bible was hidden, and at the end of the day, it was retrieved. But before it was retrieved, everything has been mutilated, everything has been, you know, uh, uh, doctored, adulterated, added, and removed. Many things have been added and removed. So we got chaff. At the end of the day, we are taught religion, the religion of man. The commandments of men. So what people are running away and holding today is commandments of men. And Yeshua swore that they will not enter the kingdom. They will not enter the kingdom. Religion does not know Yahweh. Religion are created by the fallen Israelites, leaders of Israelites. The kings and, and their powerhouse, the, 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 their first pastors and first prophets, joining hands with the leaders of the world who do not know Yahweh at all. So they are the people that go, you know, in this human commandments or traditions of men or tradition of elders, as it were, depending on which um, area of. Uh, the word or language you want to use to qualify them. They're all the same thing, whether traditional commandments of men or uh, tradition of elders, they're all saying the same thing. Let us look at what you must be care of. These Jewish people or Israelites who left the truth made them themselves the hero, the leaders of Israel. And when Yahweh sacked them out, they aligned with the Gentile world and what did they do? They circumvent or disconvented the commandments of Yahweh, the law of Yahweh, and rooted for the commandments of Satan. Went after the commandments of Satan, followed the way of Satan. And as they did that, they made themselves what is called religion. And that religion is what they have been following verbatim. So they get instruction from their own father. Now, before we go into Ephesians, let us hear Yeshua, because that is what Yeshua discovered this in time and warned all of us, told us whom they are. Those people that will be jetted away from Israel, 
the leaders, that we join hands with the leaders of this world, listen to what Yahshua said to them. John chapter 8. I read from verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. He's talking about these leaders, the fallen leaders, these globalists, the, the Pharisees, the, the Sadducees, the, 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 the priests, the false pastors and false, all of them that are called leaders. They say they know Yahweh. Yet they don't know. They have changed his name. At this stage, at this time, Yahshua is talking to them. They had changed his name. And they were answering Lord. So who was answering Lord? They were answering, they were calling him God. Who was answering God? Listen very well. Because if they knew him as Yahweh, they would have identified with the son, Yahshua. Because Yahshua bear the same name. In fact, they would have recognized that. Yahshua bear the same name with Yahweh. But they didn't recognize Yahshua. They didn't, not that they don't know him, they knew, but they had taken side. They have taken after Satan. And they bear Satan's name. They bow to him. They worship him. They owe allegiance to him. So listen to what Yahweh, uh, Yahshua himself, told them. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that, that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. They have their father. Yahshua has his father. These people have their father. Understand what is going on here. Understand what is going on here. Yahshua has his father. And all those that follow Yahshua, all the children of Yahweh, the, the true people of Yahweh, Yahshua is standing as their head. So Yahshua is there standing, and all of them have a father, which is Yahweh. Now, these other people who are the leaders who are holding other people into hostage as well, who manned the temple in Jerusalem, but it was falsehood. It was false teaching via Satan's teaching, the prince of the air, the power or the Lord or the God of the world. Now, they were listening, they were obeying, they were keeping his law. Then here, it was like a contest. Yahshua says, they were saying, show us your father. And Yahshua was saying to them, show me your father. Now, at the end, Yahshua said, okay, since you don't know my father, you cannot point to him that he is your father. I will tell you whom your father is. Your father is Satan. In the summary, let us look at uh, verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So who is the father? Father is the devil. Who is the devil? Satan. Satan. He's the devil. So can we prove that that devil is Satan? We want to prove everything we say. We want to prove it from the scriptures. You don't say, ah, this person said, nobody is saying anything. It's the word of Yahweh we are preaching. We are not preaching the word of man. Revelation chapter 12. We, we, we read from verse uh, 9. And the great dragon was cast out and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. So what we saw in John chapter 8, verse 44 is devil. Now, listen. He was called devil and Satan. Did you hear that? Devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. You can see who these people aligned their faith to, aligned their, they had taken after his name. You will see, see how the name they were serving was a different name. In fact, most of our books, if you go to the website, you will see that it talks about how the name got changed and how they left Yahweh and began to serve Satan. So John chapter 8, in there, in that 
portion, Yeshua has explicitly told us that these people didn't know Yahweh at all. They have removed his name from their head and they have put another name into their head and their mouth. And they were bowing and they were worshipping him. So, in a way, this is how Israel showed themselves to the enemy. And when they were scattered into the Gentile world, they embraced the value, the culture, the law, or the laws of the Gentile, including the Gentile religion, which today every religion follows in one way or the other, whether it is religion of Christianity or Judaism or Hindu, who the people that Yeshua was talking about here or talking to here were the Jewish leaders, the Judaizers, or the, the, those that practice Judaism. They were the people Yeshua was talking to here. They were the people that showed their religion, their culture to the Gentile world, to the Roman Empire, Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism pocketed it, as, it, as we mentioned a while ago, pocketed it and overhauled, removed, added, whatever they, and put it in their own context. What, you know, a lot of idols of the Roman and, and, uh, people, Greek people, they put, mix everything together and add, gave to us. And we ran with it. And all the centuries, all the decades, that gone by, we have followed that value system, that cultural system as embedded in what they gave us as a religious book called Bible. And we have followed it. Because we've not, we've not turned to Yahweh, we've not returned, we've not repented. And Yahweh cannot afford his spirit to somebody who rebel against him. So the very true spirit of Yahweh cannot come into the person to educate the person, to set the person, even, from, even within the Bible that the person is carrying. Yahweh will open your eyes. This is the truth. This is the way. Follow it. It cannot come until you revert to follow Yahweh and follow the, his truth. So the children of Israel were marketed into the hands of the Gentile world. And all Israel ever since had worshipped this Bow, worship the Elohim, call the Lord or the God of this world. Now, Moses prophesied. Moses, when they were still in wilderness, Moses told them that when they scatter, when, when Yahweh scattered them, because they are going to rebel, they are stiff naked people, they are not going to stay in that land. As a result, Yahweh will scatter them. And when he does that, they are going to worship other gods. What is that other god? That other god is the god that is going to be refined in the Gentile land, which name they were not using when they were in their land. And what is that is what is happening today. That is why you hear Jesus. You hear Christ. The new name, the new god. Exodus chapter 32. No, no, Deuteronomy 32. Sorry, let's go to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, Moses prophesied. He decreed to them in the wilderness and said to them, we look at that, uh, Deuteronomy 32, uh, I read from 16 and 17. They provoked him to jealousy with strange mighty ones. Strange gods. Strange. That is foreign. Something that is outside them. They were not calling that before. The God they were calling. Or the gods they were calling. It was gods of the Gentile. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Verse 17. They sacrificed unto devils. Not to, to Yahweh. To mighty ones whom they knew not. To new mighty ones. To new. Mark that. When you are reading the word of Yahweh, look at the, 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 uh, the verse word for word so that you understand what he's saying. To new mighty ones, they, they came newly up. 
these mighty ones, new mighty ones, which came newly up. About 16th, 17th century was when they founded Jesus. That is what um, uh, Moses was referring to in the wilderness. They never got into the land. They never stayed in the, into the, that land when Moses made this revelation. That they, in the time to come, that is what is going to happen to them. They're going to worship new. Even the new one that come newly. And he said, whom your fathers feared not, whom their fathers did not worship. If you read Psalm 96 verse 5, uh, Revelation 9, 20, also spoke about that. The stones and wood, Revelation 9, 20. The stones and wood, they began to worship. What is it? When Roman Empire, via papacy, captured the Bible and everything, they designed God or idol, whom they will worship. Constantine said, choose you the idols or whatever you are going to call as your deity, you are going to serve, that is going to be a spiritual head. And name it, give it a name. The, the, the meeting of Nicaea in, in Rome, that was what happened. And at the end of the day, they came with so many gods, 50-something gods. Read Yahshua's greatest commandment, it is there. You will see it. Go to website and search it. You will see it. Now, they were not able to reach agreement because each nation or amongst the bishops were saying, ah, the gods or the laws of their land is, you know, powerful. So, as they were struggling, uh, Constantine came to them and said, now I am going to take the decision. He took one God here, one God there, one God there, and mixed them up. The name of Jesus was a mixture. From Zeus to, to um, uh, even Jupiter, Zeus, and so on, we are there. Then Krishna was added as Christ. They put them together. And they came out with Jesus Christ. Isos, the Greek name, to Latin, Isos, Isos. When about 17th century, as Moses predicted, they found letter J. They removed I in the Latin and put J, and it became Jesus. That is the new God or new whatever that came newly, recently. 16th, 17th century, they founded that. And it, it was embedded, it was written in all the scriptures. And that is what they go with up to today. So the Lord, the God, they were calling from uh, wilderness down to Israel, from the Canaan land where they occupied. When they were thrown away, scattered, they founded the new one, the new one. And Yeshua warned them that another is coming in his own name, whom they will believe, whom they will worship. He will come as a Messiah to take his own place, but he will bear his own name. John chapter 5, verse 43. And that was what happened. He affirmed it, he confirmed it. What Moses said, he confirmed it. And today is Jesus everywhere. Today is Jesus everywhere. Now, Setting this background, from where do they have this culture, value, the name they are calling their deity? Yahshua said their father is Satan. Satan is the author. And now let us look at, listen to Apostle Paul. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, we read from verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, we read from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the master, be strong in Yahshua, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh. The whole armor of Yahweh is what? The word of Yahweh, Torah of Yahweh, instruction of Yahweh. Put it on. Read it, understand it, and put it in your heart. You will not be cut off. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Devil has featured again here. It's not devils. Devil. Referring to the head. The head of the deceivers. 
the head of one that deceives the whole world. According to Greek um, word for that devil, when it's translated in English, is Satan. If you look at uh, Strong's dictionary, Strong dictionary, one two two eight, number twelve twenty eight, it's Satan, slanderer, false accuser. That's the name. Now he said, you will be able to withstand him against his wiles. What is his wiles there? Trickery. Trickery. Cunnings. Lying in wait. Deceitful manner to subtly deceive you so that you'll be able to withstand it. When somebody, if you don't have the spirit of Yeshua in you, the Holy Spirit, you will easily be deceived. Because the you rejected the Torah. So you don't have the picture. You don't have anything to look at as your mirror to know whether somebody is coming with truth or false or with some deception to, you know, um, quietly or subtly, you know, push you out of the truth. So when you have the mirror, which is the commandment, the, the Ten Commandments, you'll be able to discover quickly. So that is what Pastor Paul is calling us to do. Put it on. Put it on. Know what it is. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So who we are fighting with here is a spirit. It's a spirit. It's not flesh and blood. It's not human being. Flesh and blood here is a human being. It's not human being. But he enters into human being. He re-engineers human being. He wise human being. He instructs human being. He plants his spirit in human being. And he nails human being. And put him onto his own way. And that is how he's a father of false people. False pastor, false prophet, false leaders, false accusers. The capitalists, the globalists, the rulers. That's how he's their father. And that's why, how they take his instruction. Now, we do not fight with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can you hear that? So, who is this fellow? Who is this fellow? Like the Bible had told us that Satan is what? Is, 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 the, is the God of this world is the Lord of this world, is the prince of this world, is the ruler of this world. Are you still doubting? Let the Bible tell you. Let the Bible tell you. John chapter 14, verse 30. John chapter 14, verse 30. We are not fighting with human beings with their brain. No! But human beings with their brain have been brainwashed by the enemy. So whatever they speak, they speak from the mouth of the one that brainwashed them, the deceiver. The one sub that subtly came against them with all the wiles that is in him, with all the cunningness, with all the deceptions that is in him, pumping all those in human brain and human beings now begin to be operated. He is the prince of the air. He oppressed. He lives up there. Then he, when he opens his mouth, with his music disco, you dance. You don't know what you're dancing. If you don't have this, the spirit of Yahweh inside you, you are messed up. Your heart is calibrated. Your mind is calibrated. You think you are still living like the snail that is in the, in the fire, burning and trying to you know, use the, the water from it and say it's going to destroy the, 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 the fire. It's not destroying anything. It is dying. John chapter 14, verse 30. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Who is saying here? Who is talking here? Yeshua is telling his disciples, it's time for action. The ruler of this world is coming to take over. I will soon finish with you. I will soon go into my kingdom in heaven. I will soon go. Then I'm coming back. But before then, the one that is ruling the earth, He's coming. 
and it's coming, it's coming to you, it's coming against you. Be weary. Listen to what is being said to you. The message of Yahweh, the doctrine, whatever Yahshua has preached, Yahshua said, open your ears, listen clearly. The enemy is coming. He is called the ruler of this world. Is it in your Bible there? Prince of this world. Some Bible some, we, passages we call it prince, some we call it ruler, some we call it the, 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 the master, and so on. Okay, John chapter 12, 31 to 33. John chapter 12, 31 to 33. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world, the prince of this world, the lord of this world, the king of this world, if you like, you can put all those there. They all fit in perfectly. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he will die. Yeshua was saying, I'm going to go to the grave, but I'll be lifted up. My father will lift me up. My father will bring me out from the grave. I will be with him. I will return and I will cut off this power. I will cut off this prince of this world. That's what Yeshua told his disciples. That's what Yeshua is telling us today. This power will be cut off. John chapter 8, 44 to 47. Listen to Yeshua again. You are of your father, the devil. Who was he telling, calling the father? This globalist, this capitalist, this rulers of the world, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, the, the higher of the highest, in the midst of their brethren, the Israelites, who will suddenly emerge and join hands, join faith with the Gentile leaders. They are, they are the people that have their father as devil, as Satan. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Do you know? So these people who are speaking to you today, one of their qualities, one of their characteristics is lies, falsehood. They don't live by... When they say good morning, watch out. It must be evening. <laughs> That is why Donald Trump called them. What does he call them? The, the news media. What does uh, CNN, BBC? That's the name he called them. Remind me. Uh, somebody from us now remind me. Not Donald Trump. He has a name he called them. He captures that very well. The hypocrites. No, the media. That is, they tell lies. He sort of, said, these are liars. The news media. Oh, goodness me. How does it escape us? Donald Trump is, 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 is a common word. When he see them, he said they are liars. They are fake. Fake. Fake, fake news. CNN, when, when you see any of the uh, journalists, uh, fake news, uh, fake news. So what is he saying? Liars, falsehood, that is what they preach. That's what they tell you. When they are telling you, sit down. When I say it's coronavirus. <laughs> when they say it is coronavirus, where is it coming from? From Israel. Bible said it that it's they join faith with them. They, join, they team up. They, 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 they tie themselves together. And at the end of the day, what happened? They continue to do what? To deceive, to deceive, to deceive, to deceive. Be weary of whom you are <laughs> wrestling with. You're not wrestling with human beings. You're wrestling with the power that feed these people. Lies, falsehood. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie... He speaks from his own resource or resources. He is a liar and the father of it. Imagine. Liar and the act rival of liars. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. 
He was talking to the Jews. He was talking to these globalists. He was talking to these Pharisees and Sadducees. He was talking to these false prophets, false priests. He was telling them the truth. They never believed him. So who will they believe? Their father. Their father. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? If I say this is the truth, why can't you? Because you do not hear the word of my father. You don't believe Torah. You don't, you don't stick yourself with Torah. That's, just, that's why you cannot believe the truth from me. He who is of Yahweh hears Yahweh's words. Therefore, you do not hear. So they don't believe. That's why they don't hear. They don't believe. Because you do not believe Yahweh. You do not know Yahweh. That's why you don't believe. John chapter 16, verse 11. John chapter 6. Uh, John chapter, chapter 16, verse 11. What did he say? He said, the Holy Spirit is coming. Two spirits. Satan produces his spirit. Yahweh produces his spirit. So which spirit do you produce? Or do you follow? Which spirit bear fruit inside you? You need to ask yourself. The world say, ah, they see vision, miracle, wonders. They preach the, the gospel. You know, with the spirit of, it's not the set apart spirit. It's not the spirit of Yahweh. No, 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 no. It's not the spirit of this of Yeshua who gave us <laughs> the right counsel that guides us 24 hours. Now listen. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. The prince of this world is judged. Satan is judged. Yeah, we have seen Satan judged long time ago. He told us that he's judged. And this prince of the world has unleashed spirit to the world. So which spirit is governing us? Look at verse 11, uh, 13. How be it when he, the Holy Spirit, the set apart spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of truth, he is the spirit of truth. The other one possess the spirit of lies. You hear Yeshua here saying that when he speaks, he speaks from all the resources of lies that he has mustered inside him. And they releases the devils, the demons, and so on, the, those spirits that work in the globalists, in the rulers of this world, in the first prophets of this world, in the teachers of this world. They rule them. But the spirit of Yahweh, when it, it comes to you, he will guide you into all truth. It's all about truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Show you things to come. Even today, Yahshua's spirit is showing us things to come. Yahshua's spirit is explaining the scriptures to us and telling us now this is the position of things. Tomorrow is going to be this way. That is the spirit of Yahshua. The spirit of Satan will not tell you the truth. He will tell you the opposite. If it is good today, you will say it's bad. If it's bad today, you tell, say, tell you it's truth. He called good, uh, uh, bad, call bad, good. So that is how he operates. That is how you know him. Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 3. I want us to know this power, the power behind what is happening around us, the power behind it. And you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience. This prince, this ruler, this king that is ruling the world is the one that controls the air. He is the one that controls the, the, the earth generally. The spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience, his spirit in the words in those that disobey to follow or go after Torah, that says no to destruction, to Torah, the spirit of this enemy of the souls of children of Israel, you know, is the one that rules their heart, rules their mind. Among whom also we all 
once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and we are by nature children of wrath, just as the others. We, even the believers, once we are like them, we are controlled, we are ruled by the same spirit. But when we said no, and we received Yeshua, and Yeshua gave us his own spirit, now we are separated, set apart spirit, set, set us apart. We now are controlled and ruled and guided by the spirit of Yahweh. That is how we run away from this spirit. All of, the, all of others who still remain in the spirit and control of this foul spirit, the spirit of the enemy, the spirit of the air, they are still lying, deceiving people. When they read the Bible, they interpret something different. They do what is called Bible interpretation. They don't read it according to the spirit of Yahweh as it is written, as it is given to you. So that, that is why there is confusion everywhere. Not one spirit he has, not two spirits he has. Satan has so many spirits that oppress in the life of man. That's why there is so much more deception. That is Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 3 for you there. Ephesians chapter 6, 12 to 13, where we read before. But let me read this 12 to 13 again. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of Yahweh, that you may be able to withstand an evil day, and having done all to stand. We are an evil day. We are in the day that you need the Torah, the armor of Yahweh. We need it. We need to have it in our heart, in our spirit, in our mind, write it in our head, put it in our hands, write it in our door, write it on the, you know, the walls of our, our house so that we don't forget, so that we don't leave it out, so that we meditate and think about it and walk by it. It becomes our mirror. First Peter 5, 8 to 10. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, Satan, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So who will he devour? He, doesn't, he that doesn't have Torah in him. He that doesn't have the spirit of Yahweh in him. He that says no to Yahshua, says no to Yahweh, says no to his word. So he that does not put destruction, Yahshua, inside him, the person hates life. The person loves death. Therefore, take up the whole armor of Yahweh, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So evil day is coming. All what you are talking about, what you are about to open up in this particular message, this is just the part one of it. What you are about to open up is the evil day that is staring with us, that is hovering up and down. But evil day is captured by the Bible on the Great Tribulation, Yahweh's day of wrath and the days of war. 1 Peter 5, 8 to 10. Just finish reading that. Now, the last portion of that 1 Peter 5, 8 to 10 says, but may, the, may Yahweh of all grace, it's a prayer to us, who called us to his glory by Messiah himself, Yeshua, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. May he settle you. Amen. We are going through serious situation, serious trouble, serious pain, serious ache, serious headache, serious, you know, they are robbing us. Is it money? Is it peace? Is it life? Is it love? Probably not. Everything that make of you, taking them away. Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens. You people in heaven rejoice. O you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Imagine, the last days are terrible. Then just in heaven are uh, enjoyment. Enjoy he was there. He did all manner of things. This place of air, uh, the ruler, he wanted to rule the heaven. He wanted to take over. And people said, you know, people doesn't know that this power is the one that is ruling the earth. This power is the one that is controlling the global, the capitalist, the money bag, the, the priests, the papacies, the, 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 the pastors. He's the one that is in control. 
And that is why everything is haywire. That's why everything has gone, you know, up, turned upside down. Therefore, the earth, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devils has come down to, to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. He has a short time. You remember where Yahshua promised that this one that is working, the prince of the air, the prince of the of the world, he, he is doing whatever he likes. Be careful so that you don't strove into him or he doesn't catch up with you because he, Yahshua, is coming to do what to deal with him, to clear him, to destroy him. And that's what he's saying here. He's coming to catch up with him. His time is very short. And we can see, even with our own understanding, that the days are numbered. Days of humanity, those are of the wicked, those of the days of the devil, they are numbered. But the days of the righteous are they numbered? They will live in eternity. It's not numbered anywhere. The righteous, the that day is not. Yahushua is saying the days of wicked are numbered. The days of Satan is numbered. The place of this earth is numbered. That is driving the sheep of this world, where many people have, you know, found themselves inside, and they say they are enjoying. They are clapping for him. They are bowing to him. It's about to take them into the Atlantic Ocean, and they will not return. Matthew four eight to nine. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory therein. And he said to him, all these things I give you, if you will fall, fall down and worship me. Now, who will give? Who is giving this kind of glory? Power, wealth, money, luxury, uh, uh, women, men, uh, uh, slaves, servants, everything. Everything you want is in this world. Have it. Bow down to me. Do you know that this is what this power is saying? So all these globalists, all these capitalists, all these rulers, all these false prophets and false pastors, they have all bowed down to him. Literally, some of all these four, four pastors. In fact, we will see in the book of Jeremiah, when we open this thing up, you see in Jeremiah 23 and Ezekiel 13, where they have bowed to him, Submitted to him, they are giving power to lie. That's why when they lie, you clap for them. After making a speech, you think what you hear is true, fake news. That is what you hear. May Yahweh bless us. I want to leave with you some of the Bible portions you can on their own search it out. Luke chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. Luke 4, 5 to 6. Hebrews 2, 14. Hebrew 4, Hebrew 2, 14. James 4, 4. James 4, 4. James 4, verse 7. 1 John 2, 17. 1 John 2, 17. 1 John 5, 18 to 19. 1 John 5, 18 to 19. And I want to read the last one, that 1 John 5, 18, 19. We know that whoever is born of Yahweh does not sin. Brethren, when you read Torah and you are a doer of Torah, you cannot sin. Why? Because you've been empowered by the Spirit of Yeshua. Spirit of Yeshua is what, is what guides you, and He will guide you into all things, all truth. So you walk in the path of the truth. You walk in the path of righteousness. You will not know about events, things that are happening to you now, even tomorrow, things that will even happen in, in years to come. He will open them up to you as Yahweh gives him the guidelines. He, he passes it on to you. But he who has been born of Yahweh keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of Yahweh, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. The whole world lies under the sway of Satan. The whole world is controlled by Satan. The whole world is operated by Satan. The leaders of this world, whoever is a leader of this world, unless a leader that receives the Torah, the commandments of Yahweh, and oppress and live, do them, is not controlled by this power. If you, today, all Israelites, wherever they are, who hold to Torah, are not controlled by this power. So there are people that this power controls. There are this power people that this power leads. 
guides in his own way, his own pathway of falsehood. All he does is to lead people into his own falsehood, false way, lies, lies every day. And that is where he constructed his own law. His own law is constructed, constructed on the platform of lies. And that's why and how they killed the Ten Commandments. But this Ten Commandments killed. No, it's killed to them because they are deserving to die. They say they want to die. And he gave them a reprobate mind, a reprobate spirit, spirit that jettisoned the truth, spirit that jettisoned Yeshua, spirit that says, no, let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 10 and 11 will be ready to close, up to uh, 11 to 12. I mean, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 10, 11 to 12. And with all the severeness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. When he came to us with the truth, we rejected the truth. We followed the way of lies. But as he said, when most of us, who now suddenly wake up, it was his spirit that woke us up. We spoke into our ears, his spirit quickened us. We received, we, we, we saw the Torah, we, we say, yes, this is the way. And that it dawned on us to, so he separated us from the spirit and the power, the words of the devil, and now we follow him. So we now follow the love of the truth. We are not following the love, you know, or the falsehood of Satan as it were, because he turned the love of Yahweh to falsehood. So because of that, what did he do? That they, they didn't receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. They received lies. So let us hear what Yahweh says against them. And for this cause, Yahweh shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Reprobate spirit. False spirit. The spirit of what? Satan. Yahweh is going to unleash it on them. So Yahweh allows the spirit of Satan to engulf those who said no to him. That's what happens. That's how people acquire. And that's how people now begin to reverence Satan as their father. That's how these Jewish leaders, the globalists amongst them, the rulers amongst them, the first priests, first pastors, and first teachers amongst them begin to follow Satan and begin to have him as because they don't want to follow the way of the truth. Now, concluding, concluding, he said that they all might be judged who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Going the way of unrighteousness is rejecting the Torah, is rejecting Yeshua, the Word Himself. And the person will end up in falsehood and lies. The person will end up in his life. His heart will, be, will blossom. His heart will be imagining vain things. He will be creating things and he will think he's righteous. But he's living in the um, ready-made wise of the devil, plots of the devil, falsehood of the devil, cunnings and tricks of the devil. The person has been taken away from the truth. The person deserves what? Death. That's what the Bible said. It's now the opportunity has been opened before we get in there. The, the time left for man to enter into this portion of life where everybody who is a rebellious fellow will sink. The timeline is very small, very tiny. The time left is very tiny. What are you doing about to save yourself? To learn, to learn Torah, you don't learn Torah in one day. You don't learn it in one, one month. You don't learn it even in one year. Except the Father gives you the power of his spirit to get everything loaded. It takes, it takes, it's a lifetime, you know, assignment. But anytime he wakes you up, he powers you from that time for you to queue in, for you to learn, for you to understand, for you to follow. Yes. That is how he works in us. So when he is calling us at your own time, after we've meddled with Satan and lies and all the, you know, wide away from the truth, when he wakes you up, he will equip you. Amen. He will equip you to stand firm and to be strong and be powerful. And you hold the whole armor of Yahweh's word. The whole armor. That is the Torah. That is Yahshua. You hold that. You will never, ever be put to shame.
Satan will not catch up with you. The world will not catch up with you. The globalists, they will throw you up and down. They will mess you up with you, but you will come out victorious. You will come out powerful. The world is sinking. The world is dying. They have mapped out all their strategies, how they will put us into the government of the final, the last portion of the, the government of Satan, the seven years government of Satan. That is what they are calculating, they are beating. They said, let us reset the world. Let us reset the economic life. Let us reset social life. Let us reset even money. They want to reset everything. What Yahweh did, they said they want to change it. But the Bible said something that is vehement, something that is classical, something that is wonderful. So who is he that says, and it come to pass, when Yahweh commands it not? Lamentation chapter two, uh, chapter 3, verse 37. Who has spoken? Who has commanded? Who has said anything? When Yahweh has not said it, or caused it to come to pass, when he has not commanded it, when he has not said it will happen, Yahweh said, at his own time, the enemy will emerge. Whether he will emerge, he will emerge. Satan will raise a beast to stand for him in Jerusalem to control the world, to control everywhere. So the time is almost up. But there are some few things that has to be in place before he sets in. But before that few things will be set in place, it's opportunity, it's the gap, it's the little time given to you to love Torah, love Yahweh, love, love his word, love his commandments. Follow it, do it before it's like a, a overflowing river, overflowing flood in short, before the overflowing flood will catch up with everyone who refused to abide by the instruction. May Yahweh strengthen you, may Yahweh encourage you, may Yahweh give you power, may Yahweh give you the zeal, may you be educated by him, may his spirit help you, may you never lack, may you never slack, may you never abandon his truth, may you never continue to imagine vain things in your head, may you never say no to him, may you live to the, to the end, unto his righteous right hand, so that he will keep you safe, when this flood will be all over everywhere, may you escape the danger, may Yahweh bless you. Amen. Keeping the Sabbath.